Hey everyone, it's Blake, and today I'm going to be talking about how to cut a card. So a card is basically the term that we use to refer to a single piece of evidence um, in the context of debate. So um, we like to use evidence that is basically very long quotes where we pull specific um, lines of the quotes to be read out loud. Um, and we will start off with a summary of what the quote is about and include a citation and then copy the quote um, below, and that collectively is called a card. So for every piece of evidence that you want to cite, you read it in the form of a card. So typically, um, if there are three parts to a contention, right, uniqueness, link, impact, look at the traditional casing video for um, more information if you're not sure what those words mean. So if there's three parts to a contention, each of those parts, right, should typically have a card that goes with it to prove that claim true. Um, so um, before I get into the actual process, I just want to start by making a very strong suggestion that you um, check out this uh, program called Verbatim. It's available at paperlessdebate.com slash verbatim. It is basically a template for Microsoft Word files that has a bunch of shortcuts to make formatting for debate much, much easier and cutting cards go much, much faster. So these organizational shortcuts like pockets, hats, blocks, and tags basically um, are different formatting sets that um, also um, will show up in a navigation pane as different priorities. So as you can see in this picture that I included, they have like indents for things that go under certain headings and they're all collapsible and things like that. Um, and those different indents are based on whether the words are in a pocket, a hat, a block, or a tag. Um, and it also has formatting sh shortcuts like condense and shrink, which we'll talk about as they come up when we are talking about the process of cutting a card. I strongly, strongly recommend that you check out Verbatim. It is a free program and it will save you a lot of time. Um, so um, if you plan on using Word and if you plan on doing debate for any extended period of time, you're going to wind up um, saving a lot, a lot of time um, by downloading this program. And throughout this presentation, any white text in a black box is a shortcut for the verbatim program that makes that step go faster. So um, let's go ahead and get started. So step one of cutting a card is you're going to find your evidence. So see the approach, approaching a topic video for some researching tips. Keep in mind the quality of the source is really important. So we don't want to just be cutting from front page news, right? We want to be cutting from articles, studies, you know, reputable sources, things like that. If you need to cut from a new source, it's acceptable, but it's always better to try to find somebody a little bit um, extra qualified to be talking about the specific subject that is being discussed, as opposed to somebody who's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none reporter who covers um, everything to do with the government or whatever. And a good piece of evidence has at least a few paragraphs that provide a warrant. One sentence of a warrant is not specific enough. So look at the parts of an argument uh, video if you don't know what a warrant is. It's basically the proof that your claim is true. Um, and so if the evidence only provides one sentence of proof, it's not that persuasive. You want to have a couple of paragraphs um, typically that are discussing the warrants and the study or the findings or the statistics or whatever it is that provides the warrant. A warrant is not a repeat of the claim, it is why the claim is true. So if you're trying to find a piece of evidence that says, you know, um, nuclear power will um, cost a lot of money and hurt the economy, finding a card that says nuclear power is expensive and that damages the economy is not a warrant. Rather, the warrant would look something like nuclear power plants cost 100 million dollars each to make and the government current or the economy doesn't currently have the wiggle room to afford uh massive investments right now so it's actual reasoning statistics numbers or proof behind the claim um so the warrant is the most important thing to find once you have found your evidence that has good warrants in it you're going to select a range of the text and copy and paste it into your word document so copy the evidence from the start of the first paragraph with warrants to the end of the last paragraph with warrants. If you cut a paragraph off in the middle, like if you were to not copy the entirety of a paragraph but uh, cut it off at a sentence that's in the middle of a paragraph, that's what we call card clipping. And um, that is uh, 
against the rules of debate and it can lead to you getting disqualified from tournaments um, and um, serious repercussions like that. So make sure that you are always copying from the beginning of a paragraph to the end of another paragraph. Um, never skip paragraphs. So for instance, in this example I have down here, there's three paragraphs. I wouldn't want to construct one card from that first and third paragraph and just exclude that second one in the middle. You want to always make sure that you include middle text, even if that middle paragraph has no warrants and I'm just going to, you know, skip over it later on, I still want to include it in the copy and paste to make sure that the evidence is there and it's an accurate representation coming from the article. Um, because if you think about worst case scenario, somebody might cut out a paragraph that says, you know, even though what I said above is ridiculous or like, you know, even though I disagree with the argument that was just made or whatever, like they could be misrepresenting what the evidence says if they cut out or exclude a certain paragraph or something like that. So never skip paragraphs and make sure that you start and end on the start and end of a paragraph. Um, step three, format the text. So remove the spaces between the paragraphs. If you have verbatim, you can just highlight all of the paragraphs and hit the condense button and it'll uh, make them all one big block of text and set the font and the size to the desired setting for your reading. Um, I would typically use bigger font like 14 point or something like that just to make it really um, stand out from the background. Um, but whatever font size is preferable for you, now is the time to set that. Next, you're going to go through and you're going to underline the warrants and any other important information. But remember that the parts that you are pulling out right now are the only parts that you're going to read. You're not going to read the entire quote. You're just going to read the warrants. So the flow of those warrants, the underlined parts together, need to make sense. They need to make sentences. They should kind of flow. It's okay if there's a little bit of choppiness here and there, but you wouldn't want to just say like, you know, domestic producers, foreign competition, protectionism, deadweight loss. You want to make it flow as a sentence, right? Um, so underline the warrants and any other important information and other words that you need to make them make it flow like a sentence. The next step is to shrink non-underlined text. So reduce the font for everything that is not underlined to eight points. Um, that's the standard is an eight point font. Um, and uh, if you have verbatim, you can just hit one button that says shrink and it'll do this automatically for you. Otherwise, it's a really kind of long process of highlighting all the text that isn't underlined and individually shrinking each uh, section of text, and that can take a while, but with verbatim, it's just a one-click button. Um, the font should still be somewhat legible, i.e. don't shrink it down to like one point or something like that, because then it looks like you're trying to hide something. It should still be um, possible to kind of read uh, the ununderlined text if you were to want to. The next step is to write a tag. So a tag is basically the claim or summary of the evidence. So above the paragraph of um, copied evidence, you're going to write a sentence or a few sentences that summarize the evidence in your own words. And kind of consider how the card will fit into the broader story of the case. So if this is a uniqueness card, right, I might want to kind of set up the link a little bit with how I write my tag by saying, you know, um, to use the economy example again, instead of just saying the economy is strong now, I might want to say the economy is strong now, but has the potential to collapse if growth stops. Now, of course, I want to make sure that that's still representative of what the evidence is saying, right? I don't want to just be misrepresenting evidence, but you want to word it in a way that kind of helps the broader story of the case flow. Um, once you've written your tag, you're going to write a site. So the citation must include the author's name, the author's qualifications, the title of the article, the publisher, the date it was published, the date you accessed it, the URL you accessed it at, and page numbers when applicable. And then um, oftentimes people will put their initials or like their school dash initials or things like that at the end of cards, just so that way um, they're identifiable as cards written by you if anybody has questions or if the evidence gets shared or anything like that, it can be tra uh, traced back to you. Um, so it's really, really critically important that our citations have all of these parts. 
Otherwise, it's not good evidence ethics. It's not good cite. It's plagiarism, right? If we don't accurately cite our sources. Um, the thing that is kind of unique about debate sites compared to like an MLA site or anything like that is the author qualifications bit. And the reason why that's so important is because if your opponent gets up and says, you know, well, what qualifications does the block evidence author have? Well, you have the ability to answer that if you have the qualifications in your site. Um, and then we always start our sites with the last name of the author and the last two digits of the publishing year in bold um, before we get to the um, full name, qualification, title, publisher, date, publish, date, access, URL, and page numbers. Um, so, um, and that will make sense in a second um, when we talk about how you read this uh, card out loud. The next step is to highlight. So now that you know what you need the evidence to say, you know what the tag you wrote uh, is emphasizing, you can go back through the underlined section and highlight only the absolute most important information. Um, it should still flow when reading only the highlighting. So just like when you're doing the underlining, you need to keep in mind, would reading these words together in series without the in-between stuff still make somewhat decent sense? And at that point, you have a card. This image that is on screen is a complete cut piece of evidence. Um, but now, how do I use this in round, right? So how do I read this card out loud? When you are reading a piece of evidence in debate, you read the complete tagline, the bolded part of the site, and the highlighted text. So for instance, this card would be read as follows. Protectionism actively places people lower on the social ladder, perpetuating structural violence. Block 11. There is no need to protect domestic producers from foreign competition. Protectionism results in more losers than winners. Protectionist legislation is special interest legislation. Producers misuse power at the expense of public. Rights violations, the only trade policy that benefits the public is total free trade. So you want to do your best to make it flow naturally, obviously with the rights violation thing there. Um, I, I was, it was a little awkward in how I was reading it, but you get the idea of, um, the important parts are what you read out loud. Um, but these other aspects, the full citation, the ununderlined and unhighlighted text are all there to provide important context and, um, give credit to the original author, but you're only going to read the highlighted, um, part out loud in addition to the author's last name, the last two digits of the year it was written and the tagline that you wrote yourself. So that's what you're going to be reading out loud. Um, and just as a side note, when you're reading a bunch of cards in a row, it's helpful to put a word between pieces of evidence like and or next to make it very clear that you're moving on to the tagline. Otherwise, the end of the quote part of a previous card could flow directly into the tagline of the next card and it's hard to tell that you've moved on to a new piece of evidence. So after you finish reading a card, pause, say and, pause again, and then start reading the tag of the next card. Some final thoughts about cutting cards. Cards are absolutely great um, ways to make your argument more persuasive by citing an expert or a study or something like that. But don't be afraid to use analytics where it makes sense, especially in frameworks. People use analytics quite often because um, frameworks are based on like philosophical logic and things like that. So don't be afraid to use your own words to make your point. Um, not every single point has to have cards in it. That being said, most of the topic discussion, like the contention level debate and things like that, um, is typically accompanied by cards because um, you as a debater are not an expert in those fields, but you as a debater um, are somewhat the expert on how debate should be evaluated so you can speak to the framework stuff um, from a somewhat qualified perspective. Um, add implications to cards when needed. It is totally normal to, if you think that there's, multiple important points that a card is making after you read the whole card to say, you know, there are two implications of this card. First, blah, blah, blah. Second, blah, blah, blah. That's totally a normal thing to do. So if you think that there's a lot of importance to a card, it's a, probably a good idea to add those implications to the end of the card. Um, and just be sure that you say the word and after you read your implications, the signal that you're moving from implication to tagline of the next card. Um, a question that I get pretty commonly is how long should I try to make my cards? There is no perfect length. You just have to make sure that you are covering the warrant as best as you can. Obviously, you don't want to make, you know, three minute cards and you can only get through two cards in the aft case. But 
Um, you also don't want every card to be 10 seconds long because then you're probably not getting sufficient warranting in in that time. So it's a balance. It's a art more than it is a science. Um, so you just want to make sure that you are covering the warrants the best you can. And lastly, it is uh, more likely than not that the first time you cut a card from research to finished product, it will take you a very long time. But that process gets faster the more you do it. Just like with anything else in debate, the more you do it, the better you get at it and it, you get faster at doing it and more efficient at um, producing cards. So just stick with it. You know, even just over the course of writing your first case, you will notice getting uh, increasingly faster um, with each card that you cut until eventually you can cut an entire card from research to finish in like five minutes or something like that. So um, make sure that you stick with it. Um, the process goes a lot faster if you have a program like Verbatim, um, but um, you can also operate without it if for whatever reason you don't want to use a program. It's just a way to save time. Um, that's all I have for this video. Um, as always, if you have any questions or anything like that, um, reach out or leave a comment or whatever. Um, and otherwise, uh, have a good rest of your day.